All right, all right. On we're here on a snowy day. I have a guy that I've known for about eight years now. Overall, great guy to the community. And let's welcome John Hazlett from Hazlett Realty Group. Oh, thank you, Tom. Thanks for having me today. Absolutely. You're the second Hazlett. This is the first time we've had two family members on the show within a few weeks, but JT was um, episode four, and, um, you know, you're his proud dad. Yeah, absolutely. He's done a great job. Yes, he he's, 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 uh, he's getting there. He's doing a good job. I, I love to see I love to see his videos. I tell him this all the time. You know, JT, I, I mean, you know, yeah. but JT worked for me for, you yeah. know, about a year and a half, and... Um, he wanted to pursue other things and you know it was a great move and i think i think he, he it's great i love what he's doing with social he's really taking it upon himself as a young um successful real estate agent he's definitely using social to his advantage he is he's doing a great job with it he really is so let's you know that was J yeah if you want to ap watch episode four you can watch jt let's talk to john the father now so yeah. eight years ago we met through the brick chamber of commerce we did yes uh what a great organization that is. Yeah, uh, I'm a little biased. I was, I'm the former president. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, what a tremendous organization. Uh, and I'll tell you, I've always said it, uh, joining the chamber, <laughs> the brick chamber, um, was the best gift I ever gave to my business. Yep. Yeah. Now, you've been in business on your own for three years? Uh, going on March will be three years. Three yeah. years. Congratulations. Thank and before you. that, you were with another agency. But yeah. before that, you were in the trades. I was, yeah. So prior to Hazlett Realty Group, I worked at Cara Realtors. Mm hmm um, I was the broker there for about f almost five years, four okay. or five years. Um, branched out. Before that, I was actually a union steam fitter. So, so we I must did a have met when change. you first came into Cara, because if we know each other eight years and you were there five plus the three. About that. Well, I was, I was at Cara for eight. Okay. So I All was right. th so about three mean, and a okay. half, four years in when we met. Perfect. All yeah. right, cool. Yeah. Uh, now, going out on your own was a big jump? Yeah, it was. It was, um, you know... Uh, a little bit of everything, a little bit of excitement, a little bit of holy cow, you know. Um, and then once it was done and settled and the decision was made in my head, this is what I'm going to do, um, there was no looking back. And it's just, it's been awesome. My only regret, I was treated very well where I was. Uh, my only regret is that I didn't do this sooner, to be very honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now, it's you're, you have opened a second office already. We have, yeah. We opened, uh, Barnegat's been open little over a year that's yeah. impressive so we went from three years ago to start you know jumping into it to within two years you had a second office going yeah and now is there going to be a third um at some point i think so mm -hmm. um you know we i'd like to bring a few more agents into both the barnegan and brick offices first mm -hmm. i'm at about i'm up at 31 agents okay i'd like to get that up somewhere about close to 50 uh-huh and then at that point um you know i'll, I'll, I'll review where we are and, uh, you know, I'm not afraid to grow is what I'll say. That's awesome. So. That's great. And, uh, you know, I love to see that. And, uh, you know, but I'm sure, because I know you, the qu your quality is the most important thing. Like, it's not just about having a number of agents or yeah. having a number of offices. It's about having quality yeah. people representing your name that's on the, on the building. Totally. It's about having the right people that represent <clears throat> you mm -hmm. um, while they're also representing themselves. Yep. Um, I've said that. You know, my broker in, in Barnegat, too, when I brought her on, Elise, who I've known for since we actually got in the business together, we started at Carrie together. Oh, wow. Um, and when I brought her in and I said, hey, this is this is what I'm doing. I'm coming in your area. I'd love to have you with us. Here's my here's my one rule. They've got to fit our culture as far as the agents go. Um, they, they have to have the right mindset. And if we find out that they don't, we've got to let them go. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's my only real rule. And, you know, so far we, we've had some come and go. Um, and we've had a good number stay. Yep. And we've we've been adding ever since we started. I started with five. Mm -hmm. um, I'm up to 31, and you know, hopefully that's that that's closer to 40 or 50 by the end of this year. And that's a really, I think, a sign of great business on your part because real estate agents in general are shrinking at the moment. They are. Yeah. It's any <laughs> any time the market takes a breath mm -hmm. and is stagnant, agents get out of the business. It's no different than when things are booming. Everybody and their brother wants to go get a real estate license. Yep. So this is we're just seeing the effect of that. But yeah, we, we've lost some some agents in our business, which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, and the ones that stay and persevere um, and, and work through it's hard. Our business is hard, your business especially is very hard. when you're brand new and just getting started. Um, and have no idea what you're doing. There's not a lot of guidance out there in our industry. So you really have got a team with the right people 
to show you how to do this business the right way, um, you know, and, and kind of just, you know, have some so, sort of support. I'm impressed with your organization. You have these, I, I met uh, at the, at the um, Santa Drive uh, toy collection that you have these two young guys that are like 18 and 19 years old. Yes. That's so, it's so great that you've, I'm glad you said that. On. Let me tell you a little bit about them for a second. They, um, they're they're both throwbacks, right? Like, they found us. I didn't do they find know each them. other? They do. They're okay. they're like best friends. Oh, okay, okay. So they went to school together. They did high school together and all that Rick stuff. Guys, Tom River guys. Okay. So they came into. They just walked into my office and said, "Hey, we just got a real estate license, and we, you know, we're interviewing it with at a bunch of places, and we wanted to see if this might be a fit for us." They came together. They came so together. It was like Step Brothers interview. Kind of in a way, right? <laughs> so I was like, "Yes." So. We, you know, I scheduled time for them to come back and, and meet and talk, and you know, I gave them basically the nuts and bolts of everything that we do, um, where I where I feel they may struggle as young men, where I feel like they can grow, mm -hmm. and ultimately laid out a plan for them. And very shortly after our interview, they they decided to join the brokerage, um, and then talking to them, they, they sat at a few different places mm -hmm. and. You know, uh, that both say, you know, hey, you know, you were completely different than everybody. That's you know, cool. and you have to know, it's no different than <clears throat> if I'm sitting with a seller, right? Mm -hmm. A seller, if I have someone that's super analytic, uh, analytical, I need to have all my numbers. I mm -hmm. need to show them. It's no different when you're sitting with an agent trying to hire somebody. Like, you know, they, they sat with a bunch of places and they went through the 30-minute presentation and then this is why you should work with us, mm -hmm. um, which works for some people, doesn't work for me. Sure. Um, and I think the younger generation that's not going to work for um so I, i'm very short to the point this is what we can do when do you want to get started mm -hmm. and ultimately you know they're at my office a lot which isn't which is rare in this day and age of real estate they're there most days a week uh watching how everybody else does business learning from people like jt like uh, we have a guy lenny that's there all the time lenny oates who's awesome um myself and anyone that kind of interacts and they both have clients they're working with at the moment. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, so, you know, it's great. They're 18 and 19 years old. They're afraid of being 18 and 19. Uh, the one Dom has, uh, Dominic has uh, a client right now, and he's he was nervous to go out and meet them and say, you know, hey, what do I do when they ask me if, how long I've been doing this? I said, tell them. Be honest. You don't lie. Yeah. So he went out, and he says, John, it was awesome. You know, they said, how long have you been doing this? And he says, do you want me to lie? Do you want me to tell you the truth? And I'm like, well, tell us the truth. And it's like a few months. I'm 19 years old and blah, blah, blah. And they absolutely loved it. You know, the best part, though, is he's 19 years old and only has a couple years of experience, a couple months of experience. Yeah. But he's got you behind him who's yeah. got a wealth of information. And, and, you know, you've been a broker, you know, for eight years now. So, like, it's not like that, you know, he's, he's going to be handling this on his own if he has a question right. he's got you he's got lenny he's got other people sure. in your office that have a ton of experience that can go out with him and help him to yeah. overcome any obstacles you got a great lender in mike martone totally so like you know he's got him behind him he so does. there's a lot of people that are behind this young guy who doesn't have yeah. a, a ton of experience so it's not in my mind because he's with you guys he's got a team behind him right it, it, we're a great learning experience for any agent really but yep. especially and I've always I love hiring brand new agents to the business um, they come in with a certain amount of you know um, it's word I'm looking for like gusto mm -hmm. right and it's my job to manage that mm -hmm. to let them know hey there's gonna be shortfalls right yep. there's gonna be times where it's not gonna be so great and this is what you we need to do this is what we need to be focusing on yep. right so they're both very good at that. So, did um, the, so Dom got the uh, listing, or, no, or he's helping them. He's, find a he's house? helping them find a house okay. first, and then he is gonna. They told him, you know, when we're gonna list our house, we're gonna list it with you. So, so he's gonna have two on the board. He's gonna have two on the board, pretty probably pretty quickly into this year. And so. now, what about the other guy, Dom um, Jack? He's got a, a few things working too. Good. Um, both of them are workers. You know, they they come in, they they do what they're told. Um, you know, I, I try to explain everything to the best of my ability to to show them what to do and how to do it every day. Um, from and the mortgage side, we got Mike doing the same thing with them, and, uh, and, they, and they're getting it. And if they, they really watch are. JT, I mean, that's a good way. And again, they can, they're, young, they're young guys, so they're going to want to go the social route more than some of the other you know, agents that aren't as socially. Yeah, they're, they're going to start to do that really soon. Mm -hmm. They're going to start to branch into that a little bit. 
great. So, yeah, and, and it's great. And, I, you know, I told them, you can't be a secret agent. you got to get yourself out there. So. I think I want to uh, have both of them together on the podcast. Yeah, I'm up. sure they would do that. I think that that would be great to give them a little uh, head start in their career. But i, yeah. I got to watch now. I, I'm, I'm playing favorite because it's the Hazlet <laughs> Realty Group now. You know, I'm going to have Anthony Battle complaining that uh, <laughs> I, I, I had so. you. I had Hazlet on four times, you know. <laughs> four guys from Hazlet got on. Yeah. So, uh, but that's all right. Shout out to Anthony Battle today. Hey, nice. Anthony. Nice to nice, nice to be the number one uh, YouTube view uh, viewed uh, podcast so far, Anthony. So far, John's ready to take <laughs> it over. All right, so Anthony's um, a great kid, by the way. Anthony is yeah. a great guy. I I, he, I met him through uh, some networking. He came to the grand opening in yeah. Belmore, but he's an overall great guy. He Agreed. likes and shares posts. He's a he understands the value of community and yes, networking. He does. He's having his uh, networking for the young professionals, anyone that wants to come out at the Tom's River Chamber uh, on February 7th. So, Anthony, you got a nice plug today. There you go. Um, so, also, let's talk about Chamber. Let's talk sure. about community giving because I think that's your organization. I mean, you're just a great guy. Um, and just in full disclosure and transparency, John Hazlett is my realtor and has done all the work for Wingman, for Wingman Properties, as well as for my personal. Uh, I've known John, like I said, for eight years. So. I do know him personally, so I have a great relationship with him, and he's done right, always right by me and my family. So thank you. For and that. vice versa. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, so let's talk about community giving. You know, sure. we, we, we touched on the chamber, but um, you know, you, you're and you and your company have been big supporters of our, you know, the toy drive, the food drive. Now, what, where, how do you see that working? How do you do you do it? You know, do you, do you do it for the marketing and the, the return on it? Do you do it because you're just a good guy? Do you do it because it gets you into the community? Tell me what made you, like, when I said to you one year, I said, hey, John, I'm going to do this toy drive, and you're like, we're in. Yeah. So tell me more. Like, what got you to that point of we're in? Well, here, I grew up in this community, right? I'm mm -hmm. born and raised in Bricktown, uh, still live there, uh, raised my family there. Um, we'll probably always live there. Um, anything I could do to give back to the community. Uh, you know, I, I come from a volunteer background. <laughs> Uh, my father was a volunteer baseball coach for a long time. I did that for about 20 years myself. Oh, wow. okay. um, so, you know, I was, that's the way I, I would give back, right? Um, so, you know, as you grow in business a little bit, you know, you want to look at um, how you can continue to impact your community. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a great, um, you know, that you guys came along with the, the trolley at the right time for me with that. And it was like, hey, let, yeah, let's get involved with this. And, you know, the first year I think we had like 20 or 30 gifts and, we grew it. I mean, this year was a little over 300 that we uh, put yeah. together. But is it for the marketing and sales? No. The recognition of that is nice. Um, but if you never posted anything like that, I would still, still do what be, we do you here. still be there. I would still be there. And you no know question. what's great? And, you know, I think this year was awesome. Uh, shout out to everybody. We raised over – we collected over 10,000 toys, which – That's just God, amazing. I can't when, – when, when, when that 10,000 number came out a couple of years ago – I was like, yeah, okay, ten thousand. That's amazing. But it's it's <laughs> now it's now like, how do we get to fifteen thousand? You know, yeah. it, it's funny because I have more people on board, and people have texted me, called me. You know, I've had some. I went to that chamber. We were, you know, we got recognized at the chamber dinner uh, in December, and they said, you know, I had multiple people come up to me there and say, how do you get me involved? How do I help you? How do I get you to the next level? You know, one of my neighbors in uh, at my office in Manasquan is uh, guaranteed services, and. Um, Right before the holidays, because he doesn't follow us on social media, I texted him. I said, "Helmy, thanks for you know making a contribution, donation." I, and you know his response back on text, I just I, it still blows my mind. He goes, "Let's double it next year." Like yeah. so, and That's you know those awesome. those guys are new guys in town. They've only been they bought the building next door to our Manusquan location, uh, right before COVID. So they're only in uh, Manusquan for four years. Um, this was their first uh, entry into it, but he was like, "Let's double." Like, That's awesome. you know, I have a, you know, Bobby from the chamber, Bobby D'Ambrosia. Love Bobby. Um, he reached out to me and said to me, you know, when we were short uh, on the last couple of days, he uh, he was very fast to send me a Venmo and, you know, said to me, let's get together. So I have a meeting with him, uh, you know, in the coming weeks to see how he can get more involved in the nonprofit arm of um, our world. Uh, you know, so I, I just think it's great how the community has stepped up and said, you know, um, let's do this so yeah. and it, it makes it more fun doing it together and doing it collectively and the the trial is a great you know great day and but it's, it's more than that it's you know help it's rec business owners and and people in the community recognizing that not everybody is you know 
taking care of and mm -hmm. stepping up to make those contributions. So I think it's awesome that I, you guys. I tell my agents every year that's what <clears> makes my, that and now, of course, watching my grandson open his Christmas gifts. Yep. Those are the two things that make my Christmas. Awesome. I love the fact that coming to your office, I love the fact that we always do it right after lunch. We got to yeah. <laughs> get a little energy before we pack up those toys. Yeah, but right. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. Now, um, you know, does the ball, in the future, like as we expand into other things, you think the ball in a uh, location we want to get involved in that? I if do. If we ever head down that way? We, we kind of do it uh, jointly. So okay. some of those gifts you saw were Come from up. the Barnegat okay. office too. Um, but yeah, but if we ever do put a trolley down there, you're in. Oh, absolutely. Right, yeah, cool. yeah, we'll make it work down there for sure. And I think Vonnegut is a, a growing area. Like I think that was a very strategic spot you open. Uh, again, I think when you look at real estate and when you look at any business going into different locations, and you know we've talked yeah. about this, and you know it's it's very important that you have that spot that's going to generate and be a good a good feeder for you and when yeah. i went down there to fix your google business yeah, i remember um i was i was really impressed i i wasn't familiar with the area yeah it was one you know one of my first times down there but i was like wow this is pretty impressive this spot yeah what opened my eyes to that the you know i, I was still <clears throat> um at, my, at the other the other brokerage at cara yeah and i had a year you know i, I closed a little over 50 transactions and like 50 transactions. Let's just stop there. That's one a week. That's <laughs> yeah. one transaction a week. If you think about the average person takes two weeks of vacation. So 50 transactions. That's incredible. Yeah, it was a good year. It was. It's a very good year. Um, you know, so about eight or nine of those transactions happen to be in Barnegat, Manahawk, in um, Lenoka Harbor. And it, I just opened my eyes to people. And th those are people that lived up in Brick, Tom's River, Point Pleasant, that sold and moved down there. So... You know, I saw that starting to happen, and long before I even thought of opening Hazlet Realty Group, I said to myself, you know, I have to have a presence down there. Yeah. Because this is what's going to happen. So once I opened, I just I made a I made a decision to open um, open in Brick, which is again that's where I'm from, hometown. And I said, you know, the first day, as a matter of fact, Mike Martone came and uh, visited the office, <clears throat> um, looked around, and he says, "Great, where's office number two going to be?" And I told him, I said, it's going to be in Barnegat, and Elise is going to be my broker. Elise didn't know that yet. Yep. But that was my plan. Yep. You know, I'm a big believer in planning for your future. Sure. And um, that's something that I planned, and there we are. So that office is doing well. Yep. I'd love to have some more agents in it, if I'm being very honest. If anybody is there. listening and is in the Ocean County area and in Barnegat and interested in doing real estate, reach out to John Hazlett. At the end of this program, we will – Put all his social media links and how to get in contact with him like we do with every guest. So we'll get to that later. Appreciate that. So, uh, all right, that's great. Yeah, and it's a growing area. And, you know, there's no real – there's not a lot of real estate available in this, you know, in this uh, southern Monmouth, northern ocean area. So to go a little – if you don't mind that drive a little bit further, yeah. you know, you could pick up some properties at some better – you know, more affordable pricing. That area reminds me of Bricktown 30 years ago. It really <coughs> does. So that, I think that's where it's going. Yeah, oh, totally. Yeah. And you see that even in Bayville. And, yeah, you know, yeah. As, as you start, you know, the hard part with uh, Bayville, I feel, is that Route 9 is so congested. Like, Route 9 is Atlantic tough. City uh, Expressway. Yeah. Route 9 is tough there, no question. But, but they have some beautiful homes They do. There. A lot of nice waterfront down there. Yeah. You know, JT bought his house down in Lenoka Harbor, which yep. is, you know, right a stone's throw from there. Yep. Um, nice and he neighborhood. Likes it, right? Loves it. He yep. loves it. And he's got he's got he's got a couple other podcast buddies down in his area. Shout out to Marco Reyes. Shout out to Tom Jara. I know they're all in that Forked River, yeah. uh, Lenoka Harbor, Lacey area. So um, that's great. And you know, again, those are the young guys. Those are the thirty year old guys, twenty five to thirty year old guys that now are going to start there. And you know, yeah, like brick thirty years ago. Like brick thirty years ago. Yeah. So that's Absolutely. great. So um, grit. Let's just kind of tackle grit. We sure. were talking before, off off the line off before the podcast about. You know, the fact that you have two locations and, like, yeah. you've, you know, it, but it didn't happen overnight. No, nothing So I want, I, I, you know, part of this podcast is to get aspiring entrepreneurs to kind of see that, you know, that see, see some success stories. And, you sure. know, you're definitely a success story in my mind. You're successful. Again, I think success comes in different forms and ways. Me but too. you have multiple business. You have multiple locations to your business. You're a huge community guy. You give back to the, you know, you give back. You're part of the chamber. You have a beautiful family, so like you, like in my mind, that equals success. It's not all about a dollar, a, a net worth, because a net worth to me that you have net worth and sure. all those other things that again, I'm not counting your money, but no, you know, yeah. I, you know the, those, those other things equal net worth in my mind. Yeah, to, to me, success <clears throat> is waking up happy every morning. That's a success. Couldn't, perfect. Yeah. So let's kind of go into the grid of it. Like, so you're a steam sure. fitter, then you yeah. go to uh, Cara, then you go on your own. 
And you did that all within, you know, not a, a whole yeah. lot of time. So, um, you know, I spent 13 years <laughs> as a steam fitter, okay. um, local union 475. Going into the city every day? Uh, it, up, in, up in that area, the Newark yeah. area. Okay. Um, I worked at the refinery for a long time. And that was, that was like the family business. I was okay. a fourth generation. Uh, my my great grandfather, my grandfather, my father, my uncles, everybody. I have a cousin that's still in the local, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and and just a you know, it's just it's what I grew up kind of knowing. Mm-hmm. Um, and to be very honest, I got in because I needed benefits. I had a kid, mm-hmm. and uh, who was diagnosed with diabetes, which is JT. And I you know, I joined basically for the benefits. Mm-hmm. Um, and it and listen, it was great work. Um, I was. You know, I would say I was mediocre at the job, if I'm being very honest, because it's not something that I loved. There was no passion in but, it. But it was a job, it was right? It a job and with benefits. I, I wouldn't change anything. I learned so much uh, from working there. Um, some of my best friends in the world that I consider brothers um, come from there. Yep. And I'm still in touch with, with a, a large majority of them. I'm still actually a member of the local. I pay my dues every year still. Um, but yeah, so it's probably a good lead source for anyone looking for uh, real estate. It was a pretty good lead source. I've done a lot of business with some friends <laughs> yeah. there, no question. But you know the way that job works, it's construction. So when you get to a job, you start working yourself out of one. Yeah. Um, and I was lucky. I was fortunate enough to be on uh, a job for a long time. I was what's called the shop steward there. Um, that job ended, and I went back to our union hall, and there were, we had a few hundred guys out of work, and that's the way unions work, right? You go to the bottom of the list, and. Very, I never thought about doing anything else, truthfully. Um, and you know, it was over the summer, and I was out for two weeks. I'm not a guy that could just sit home. The kids were in their uh, early teens; they didn't want to hang out with dad anymore. No. So uh, I was bored, literally, with my dog, you know, watering the garden every day, waiting for weeds to pop up. And uh, I said to my wife, "Man, this is terrible. Like, I'm bored out of my mind." And she said, "You know, I've uh, ever since I've known you, you've talked about real estate. Why don't you?" look into that just go get your license and you know maybe as a side hustle or whatever so i did so that was we had that conversation on a thursday Uh i woke up friday i i I actually went on craigslist figured out who was hiring which in real estate i realize now everybody's always hiring i went and i sat at three different places that friday you said craigslist yeah (laughs) right yeah 12 years ago 13 almost 13 years ago so i went i sat at three places um the place I, i thought best fit me uh, was Kara, yep. and I started there. Took the the class, uh, got in the class on Monday, so it was a short turnaround, and uh, passed it, and there, there I was. And uh, started pretty quickly in the business. Uh, I had a, a few transactions very early on, mm-hmm. which I didn't realize was rare, because uh, I didn't know, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, Hurricane Sandy happened, and our phones were ringing off the hook. Mm-hmm. And I also got a call to go back to work where I thought I'd be out for a little over a year. And, and I said, you know, I remember telling my business agent, um, let me call you back in 10 minutes. And he's like, why? You want to go back? To work? I was like, hey, just give me 10 minutes. And I called my wife. And I said, hey, I can go back to work on Monday. She's like, oh, that's great. She said, why don't you sound happy about it? I said, you know, I just feel like I'm on to something with this real estate. I, I think I should see it through. And she says, John, you're a, you're a union member. You can go back whenever you want. Just keep paying your dues see real estate through and that's really all i needed i called them back and i told them hey thanks give it to somebody else i'm doing something else at the moment and the rest is really history truthfully i want to stop also because i think that um one thing that a lot of entrepreneurs need and it sounds like you have is a support system at home no question listen uh i love my wife um and i wouldn't be where i am today without her and and really it would have been very easy for her to say hey go back to work. What are you kidding? Right. And, you know, and she Mm. actually, you know, anytime I've bet on myself in life, I've done well. Mm -hmm. Right. And she kind of pointed that out to me and and without her and her support, um, like I said, I, 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 you know, I'd probably still be a a steam fitter, which would have been fine. Yep. But, um, you know, but I, now you're able to employ all these people. You're able yeah. to coach them and train them. I will, t- and- I will tell you all that that's a really a good business, and, and, and you can make a, a very good living there. Mm-hmm. Six figure, no question. I make a lot more where I am now than I did then, mm-hmm. um, and that's just because you know the, the nature of it. So yep. you know, shout out to Jess. Shout out to Jess. Yeah. All right, and we also have to give it a shout out from a few minutes ago to Mike Martone. We missed that one along the way. MM but Mortgage. MM, MM Mortgage. Yeah. So uh, Mike Martone's a great guy. I'm yeah. glad that you teamed up with him because yeah. I think he does a great job in the transactions. Yeah, Mike uh, here, and you know, people come in your life for certain reasons, right? I've known Mike. I used to coach his son in baseball, okay. and uh, we we were friendly. You know, he, he's one of the parents that were 
a good baseball parent, right? He could stay out of the coach's way for the most part, other than busting chops and stuff like that. <laughs> and then when I got into real estate, he, he's somebody that I, I sent out a card to. Every, I still have my, new, my newer agents do this. I, I wrote out to everybody that I knew a handwritten note with my business card and just said, hey, if you know anybody, <clears throat> yep. let me know. So Mike could tell that story pretty well, but he got the card and said to his wife, look who's trying real estate and threw it in the garbage. And uh, I ran into him at baseball, oddly enough. His son was, uh, I think, a senior. JT was a sophomore, and they were on the same varsity team. And um, he asked me how I was doing, and I said, pretty good. And I told him a little bit, and he was like, how many have you sold? I'm like, you know, seven or eight. And he was like, John, that's really good. And I said, yeah, that's what everyone keeps saying, but I, I still didn't really know what I was doing, to be very honest. Uh -huh. And uh, we started working together from there, and – Really, Mike taught me in one open house that he came, set up my open house that weekend. Nobody came to the open house. And for three hours, he taught me more about the real estate industry than I had learned the uh, six or seven months prior. Wow. And uh, we've been a, um, you know, he's my number one lender. Uh -huh. And, you know, a, also a very, very close friend. Yeah, sure. And, um, you know, I think we've closed way, well over 150 transactions together. Um, it's, it's probably closer to 200. That's impressive. Uh, yeah, and, and what is awesome about that, Tom, is we've never lost one. Oh, that's, that's so, even better. Yeah, Mike is good at what he does. Um, and, you know, he finds ways, right? He finds ways. And listen, you know, what it, you know what's great about him? <clears throat> He'll sit down with a client, and if they're not ready and they can't do it, he's not going to push them. He's, he's, he's going to give them a plan and say, this is what you need to do over the next two or three months. Call me back then and let's figure this out. Oh, great. So it's, he's great. You know, listen, anyone that's ever used him, you know, that I've recommended has always raved about him. So, and, and again, we've never lost one. So that's success. Keep you got to like that. Absolutely. All right. So we have support at home. Yeah. We have support with co with people in the community, people that, you know, mm -hmm. and then, so you're, you're, you're running, you're running Kara's, uh, you're the broker of record in the brick office. You go out on your own. So you said at the beginning, it's scary, it was nervous. Right? But you knew, though, if you just were consistent, right? Is that, yeah, when you think yeah. about one of, the, one of the keys to this is the consistency. It's the consistency, and that's a part of the grit, right? It's, yep. it's, it's a part of, you know, grit to me is, you know, understanding that life's a marathon, not a sprint, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to keep your eye on what your prize is, but at the same time, you've got to immerse yourself in the grind. Like, you can't be afraid to get up every morning and do what you have to do. And sometimes that's low-level things. When you're a business owner, especially early on, you wear many hats, you know. So you've got to be – before I hired an assistant, I was the social media guy. Mm -hmm. Before, you know, I was the – I was helping the agents with the transactions before I had a transaction coordinator and stuff like that. So along the way, it's – you've got to do all those things until you could find someone to do them and – you know, and we're getting to a point where, you know, we're doing pretty well with that. We've got great support. Um, our, we have two admins, one in Barnegat, one in Brick, Darren right. and Lisa, who are awesome. Um, without them, I mean, they're, they're the, a huge support to me, to Elise and Barnegat, and really to all of our agents. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's great. So, um, and, and, and I think one thing is the goal changes. As time goes on, sure. as a business owner, you have to change the goal. So sure. the goal for right now is to, you know, get to this level mm -hmm. and do this with this many people and this group but as 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 the business evolves you want to keep changing the goal totally you, you keep moving the goalpost right yep so you, you 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 accomplish one goal and you move on to the next and you know i'm a big believer too is there's going to be opportunity along the way to accomplish in that goal and when that happens you can't be afraid to take that opportunity right mm -hmm. the, the barnegat office you know that was something i planned on doing in year two or three mm -hmm. an opportunity came up shortly after year one <clears throat> and i said well now I, I have to do this now let's get it so i fast forwarded my goal and yep. i said you know we're gonna we're gonna do this right now and yep. then here we are right that's awesome and yeah. now when you start thinking about location three and those agents bringing those agents up you'll start to figure out what that does now what does ai do to your to your world. AI is... In the um, real estate transaction. Of yeah, AI is helpful. I, I think it, it helps in many ways. Um, <clears> it's, <throat> it's still uh, early enough where, you know, I'm curious about certain things with it long term. Um, but the short term of it so far, um, I like it a lot. Okay. Um, you know, it's, it's a tool. It's like, it's like having a big toolbox, right? You pull it out when you need it. Mm -hmm. You use it. Um, I believe if you become super dependent on it, you're doing yourself a disservice. Uh, but if you use it the proper way, um, 
you know, I think it could be a, a mega tool in the real estate industry. Great. Now, do you think it's going to change how brokers work and agents work? And Yeah, I do. And, and I think those changes will be mostly good. Perfect. Um, but again, like you really like here, you know, you can have AI do almost anything, right? I like it for this. Like you can actually role play with AI. Mm -hmm. So, you know, usually in real estate, when we practice role playing, it's awkward. You're sitting across from somebody and you're, you're playing a part and they're playing a part and you're, so it works. We do it. I like it, but you could do it with AI and have it respond to you and you don't know how it's going to respond. Yeah. So for tools like that, I love it for helping to write a description or the narrative on a, a on a home. I think it's awesome. But still, you, I, we'll do it, and then we'll go through and we'll tweak still it. Edit it. Yeah, and still and I think that that's important because I yeah. think once you start relying too much on it, you're going to lose the, your agents sure. are going to lose focus of like, sure. And what what that means, and then they're going to go. The customer's going to go. What does this even mean? They're like, well, what do you what do you say? I had AI write yeah. it, so you need to review it yourself. But I think that there's I think that that's good technology. Me and too. I, I was on a call before um, this uh, podcast with a uh, mortgage group of t 10 lenders that, you know, are looking for some help with their, you know, stuff that, you know, Wingman offers. And, you know, uh, they were just, you know, pro on, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm sure you're going to feel the same way, is technology is really helping real estate. It is. Now, now here, I'll tell you, I, I've seen some uh, hiccups <laughs> with AI also. There's some services out there that will um, actually answer your clients for you, mm -hmm. right, with yep. AI. Um, I've seen that. Um, I, I didn't quite try it myself, but... Um, I don't think you could take the human out of what we do. I don't think you know so either. I, mean? I think that in general, like yeah. I think a lot of people are trying to use automation. Yeah. Because and it's great. You know, there's some very great things about automation, but I also think that there's some things where you still human intervention still yeah. that that's going to be like you know your brand like your brand. You, I I sure. don't want to make everything about you know doing it all online or no. doing it all through a you know a bot and a ticket system. Right. I want to be able to do it through talking to a person because I think that that's you know that's that extra touch that that touch that last touch point. Absolutely, yeah. So, uh, you know, I think that there's good ben there's benefits, but I think that the fine, you know, the, in the real estate and, and, and even into the mortgages, I think there's a lot of benefits for technology in general and totally social agree. media and, you know, um, more online stuff than in the olden days. So I think that that part of um, the tech world is good for totally agree. real estate. Yep, absolutely. What's your prediction for 2024 on the Jersey Shore? Um, I, I, here, I, I think interest rates, even though they've gone up the last couple of days, I think they're going to start to trick down. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think you, you're starting to see if you follow inventory. Inventory's come back a little bit, even since January 1st. Okay. When I say come back a little bit, we're still way below what we, what, what we normally are. Mm -hmm. you know, just to give you an example, I'll use Bricktown. Um, 2017 to 2018, we trended about 450 to 475 homes on the market for sale. Right now, we're, as of this morning, we're 151. So we're still uh, yeah we're still we have to double twice uh, well, double and then yeah, again and then, so just to get back to, to yeah. where that was and that was a very balanced market those years which are years where in the real estate industry you do pretty well mm -hmm. you know when things are booming the way they did in 2020 2021 some agents do really really well and some of the beginner ones will kind of struggle um, only because you know mostly only because it's when when there's you know very few homes on the market to sell and you have this many buyers it's hard to put something together mm -hmm. you know so really it's it's about you know listings are important um but at the same time things were coming on the market they were just leaving it like this yep you know so so we were down uh january 1st but about 101 on the market in bricktown so again we, we've climbed quite a bit since then all right so so, so there's a little more inventory you think the bit. rates are going to come down a little bit mm -hmm. but we're still off the 2017 2018 by you know yeah yeah. But by yeah, inventory or, wise, yeah. quite a bit. Wow. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So um, I hope that 2024 is a stellar year for Hazlet Realty Thank Group you. and you and you and um, I look forward to uh, having the young guys in one day. Yeah, we we'll, we'll, we'll plan we'll, that. We'll have to connect, uh, you know, and, and and get them on there. And I want I want to thank you for coming in today. But I sure. also before you before we sign off, I'd like for you to tell uh, the viewers how they can find you, where they can find sure. you on your website, online, on on socials, and if you want to put your phone number in there. Sure. So online, our website is hazletrealty.com. That that kind of will lead you to the rest of our social media. Uh, we're Hazlet Realty Group on uh, <coughs> Facebook and Instagram. Um, you know, JT's got his JT real estate with JT on uh, TikTok. TikTok. Um, our phone number is 732-836-8788. Um, dial one for Brick, two for Barnegat, and that's us. 
Awesome. Well, yeah. thank you again for coming on today. Thanks for explaining your story and kind of inspiring to see, you know, to go from where you went to, to where you, you know, your middle stop to where you are now. And I look forward to hearing about um, Office 3 when the next time we uh, meet, meet up. Sounds good to me, Tom. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks for Have having me. Have a great me. day. You too.